Hi everyone, it's Nicole Steele, the owner of The Joyful Stamper. I'm so happy to be here today. Let me refresh my screen and we'll get things going. Okay, this is always the tricky part for me, seeing if it pulls up because sometimes it doesn't work. Oh, and it looks like it is today. Yay! Okay, it's two o'clock. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Are you finding that your days are going a little bit slower and longer now that uh, we are all in lockdown and shelter in place? Is that happening to you? Hi, Jane. I don't know. My days haven't really changed all that much. I The YMCA is closed. The Swickley Library is closed. Our church is closed. But we've been having live streams um, online. Saturdays at 5 and Sundays at 10 a.m. And tonight we're act our church is actually having a worship night at 5 o'clock that we are going to watch. So, yeah, I don't know. But I know the days are going pretty long for, for my daughters. So, even though they have school, they can't go anywhere. Mom's not letting them. Although I do give them my errands to run. So, as a self-confirmed homebody, this is a dream come true. Because I have my kids that are eager to go run errands for me and go grocery shopping and drop things off and pick things up. So <laughs> I'm rather enjoying it. And now I think I found out, um, Brian said that till April 30th now, things are supposed to remain shut down. So that means we have one more month at least together. And I love it. I like having everybody home. Yeah, we live in a really small house and we're getting, I don't know, it, you can hear everything. So they may not like it so much, but I do. I do. So I don't know. So my days seem pretty normal, and I just found out. I'm so excited. The Sookly YMCA has been posting workouts on YouTube. Yay! So now in addition to walking outside, I can do some strength training because I, I feel like I'm getting really weak. Yeah, we celebrated Brian's birthday, so it's been a lot of cake, a lot of ice cream, and not much strength training. <laughs> So I am slowly losing my muscle and I'm going to be 45 in two weeks. I can't afford to lose any muscle. I just can't. No. But there's a lot going on in Stampin' Up! today. It's the last day of the month. Tomorrow is the first day of April and it seems like on the last day of the month and the first day of the month, there's always a lot that goes on. So yeah, no exception. Today, last day of celebration. So this this booklet's the last day to get all the freebies from this um what else is going on? oh my retired stamp sale well this is backwards it's the last day i have a stack of retired stamps that i'm getting rid of and so for every 60 dollars you spend you can pick one from the photo and then just email me your choice and it'll be yours once i see that the order goes through so today's the last day for that um the other thing that it is the last day of is the coordination product released. So Stampin' Up! released some dies and some really cute, really, really cute designer series paper. And it was meant to coordinate with selected celebration products and mini catalog products. And my personal favorite was the Please Just Punch designer series paper. This isn't such a great copy, but this paper right here it had some super cute patterns in it and it was really I was really happy because it goes with four of our punches so you can punch out the images on that DSP with it so that's the last day for that too but you know there's lots more good stuff coming up because tomorrow tomorrow there's a brand new suite coming out the ornate garden suite and I bought it all I bought it all and I've been playing with it like crazy and I did a sneak peek video a couple weeks ago but I have the products here I'm gonna show them to you again and I have a project that we're gonna use some of the designer series paper for this so and interestingly enough I've been watching stranger things so yeah I don't normally watch TV but my daughters convinced me to watch stranger things and said I was really missing out so since we just got Netflix I pulled it up we, I stayed up till 3.30 in the morning on Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday with Elena, my 14-year-old, watching season three. We watched it from start to finish because 
I just couldn't go to sleep not knowing what was going to happen. And I have to say, the last episode, I was really sad. I was sad with how it ended, but I know season four is coming, so I have that to look forward to, and I could see how things get wrapped up there, but I never thought I would get so hooked on a TV show. And I'm a big reader, and when I read books, the characters become like friends to me. So whenever I end a book that I really got into, I get really, really sad because I feel like I'm saying goodbye to some really good friends. Well, I kind of felt like this with this TV show too, with Stranger Things. So <laughs> I think this quarantine is doing weird things to my mind, right? I'm starting to like um, attach to TV characters. <laughs> I need real people, right? So, all right, I am gonna flip the camera down. If you're watching this replay, welcome. I am so happy you're joining me. Um, and if you're watching live, feel free to comment, ask questions, shout things out, you know, be interactive. So that's what I like about this. So I'm going to turn the camera down to my desk. Close your eyes if that makes you dizzy because I'm going to have to adjust the light too. So here we go. My phone flipped. Hopefully it is going the right way. Oh, I'm having some problems. Don't look yet. Okay, and I've turned my light down. All right. I think I got it. Yes. Okay. I'm good now. I'm good. Okay. So here we are. These are the two projects that we're going to make today. This one uses the new Ornate Garden Suite collection that is coming out tomorrow. It's going to be available tomorrow. And us demonstrators have been able to play with it for a whole month now. So, and I have some really big plans with it for this, which I will share at the end. And then I thought we'd say a last hurrah to the celebration set tags in bloom. I didn't get to play with this one all that much, and it's so pretty. And the other night, this idea popped into my head for a really distressed pink and white brown card with some sort of like whitewashing on the background. So I thought I'd give it a try. So that's what we are going to play with today. So if you're jumping on, give a shout out and say hello so I know you are here. All right. First things first, though, for sharing the video last week, I have some Tropical Oasis Designer Series Paper Sampler. So I have sheets in each of the patterns and Sherry Turner, you are the name that I drew. So message me your address so I can get this in the mail to you because I also have a card for you too. So Sherry Turner, uh, you were the one who I drew for sharing. Thank you so, so much. And feel free to go ahead and share this week too because I will have a drawing next Tuesday and uh, next Tuesday's live too for a prize um possibly I think it might be the the kit components to make these projects I can't stamp the images for you but I can send you the pieces to make this to make both of these projects so but sharing really helps me and I really really appreciate it so thank you so much so I think we are going to start with the tags and bloom card so let me lay this one the night our neat sweet one aside and I'm going to get the pieces for this. And we're using Soft Suede and we're using Blushing Bride. Yes, Blushing Bride. I always get Petal Pink and Blushing Bride confused, but they're two totally different colors. Two, I don't even have all the colors memorized yet. You think I would, but Stampin' Up! refreshes every so often. So, so we have eight and a half inches by five and a half inches of a piece of soft suede cardstock and I scored it down the middle at four and a quarter. I always seem to make A2 cards. I know there's other sizes. There's no card sized. There's inchies. There's um, scraplings. I should probably experiment with those some more. huh? So that's the card base. I'm going to set that aside because I'm not going to work with that for a while. What I am going to work with are these two pieces. So I have a soft suede um, piece of cardstock right here. And let me check my notes because I have the dimensions here, although I will put them in the description to this video on YouTube. And I'm going to make up a project sheet that will have all the, the measurements in it. So this soft suede one is five inches by three and three quarter inches. And this blushing bride piece is four inches by five and a quarter inches. Now what I'm going to do with this one 
is crumple it up. <laughs> So this is a really good technique to do if you head down to your stamp desk because you're feeling frustrated or really stressed. It's like it's like a stress ball. You know those squishy stress balls that people keep on their desks? Well, if you're a stamper, you can crumple up paper. So just crumple it up however you want. You can unfold it and crumple it up again. So I'm just noticing now as I'm looking down that I have been wearing the same outfit like multiple times. I mean, I do my laundry. I do my laundry. But from not going anywhere, I'm reaching for the exact same pair of leggings, t-shirt, hoodie. Yeah. Because there's no reason to dress up, right? So I'm gravitating. So which makes me wonder, why do I have a closet full of clothes if I'm only wearing the same things over and over again? So now I'm going to smooth this out. Now, if you're really ambitious, you can pull out your iron and you can iron this paper flat. So yeah, your paper can take it. You know, you can sew on paper too with your sewing machine. Okay, so we have that. Now what I'm going to do is start at this corner and I'm going to tear. And it doesn't have to be a perfect, perfectly symmetrical tear. So you can just go like that. That's good. I'm actually going to peel off that little piece right there too. And okay. So now we have two pieces there and we might need to adjust those later. We'll, we'll see. I'm going to lay that aside and I'm going to take this and I'm going to show you how I made this whitewashed look. I'm taking a Whisper White um, ink pad. Now this is pigment ink, which means it takes a lot longer to dry than regular dye based ink. So you're probably gonna get white ink on your fingers. You can use your heat tool to speed up the drying of this, but that's why I'm gonna work with this now so that I can lay the piece aside and do other things and it'll dry in the meantime. So you're gonna take your Whisper White ink pad, flip it upside down, and we're gonna drag it across our cardstock. Do not press really hard because we don't want big ink pad impressions on here. We just want a light swash of color. And then I'm gonna turn the paper in the other direction and I'm gonna go the other way, and then I'm gonna turn it vertically, and I'm gonna go across. So the point is, you just wanna go back and forth in every different direction. Just to put some white ink streaks on it. I just, I love this look. Really, really love it. Okay, now what you can do is you can take a stamp and sponge and just lightly brush it back and forth, up and down on your piece of cardstock, and it'll sort of smear that white ink around now, just like this. Hi, Linda, thanks for joining me today. Okay, so just use your sponge to smear that around. I just, I love that soft look, I love it. Oh. So that was a Whisper White ink pad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm taking this flower, let me pull out this stamp set here. We're gonna use the Tags and Bloom Celebration Set. It's the last day to get this with your order, so I thought since this idea popped in my head, I need to do it today, it's now or never, right? So I'm gonna take this flower here, and I'm also gonna be taking this small tulip image right there, and I'm gonna stamp in a random pattern on this. Now the colors I'm going to use are Soft Suede and Crumb Cake, and <laughs> before you wonder, Yes, I reused this ink pad. It used to be close to cocoa, which is a really old Stampin' Up! color. Well, they retired that color, and rather than buy a whole new ink pad, I just bought a soft suede reinker and just inked up my close to cocoa pad, and it's it's working good. So, I'm a make do kind of girl. If I can use something over and over until it falls apart, I will do so. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not so good because sometimes my husband just has to say, you know what, Nicole, it's time to buy. It's time to buy new. So now I'm gonna take those two little flower beds and I'm also gonna use soft suede ink and I'm going to randomly stamp that in between the bigger flowers. You know, I read a book once, it was called The Happiness Project and it talked about whether you're an one of the chapters was, are you an overbuyer or an underbuyer? And I came to the conclusion, and it wasn't hard to figure this out, I'm an underbuyer, except for stamp supplies. When it comes to stamp supplies, I'm an, over, under, I'm an overbuyer for sure. Now here's my quick and dirty method of cleaning my stamp. There you go. Now I'm gonna take a crumb cake ink pad, and I'm gonna use that same larger flower image, 
and I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to stamp it in the little unfilled spaces there. Don't overthink this. So yeah, so are you an overbuyer or an underbuyer? You know what? I am glad that I was an overbuyer of toilet paper on a regular basis because I have not had to buy any since this whole mess started. And I'm going to take those little flower buds again and I'm going to ink it up with crumb cake and add a few more. So I have enough toilet paper just from me regularly buying it to last like two months. So I did not need to fight anybody to get anything. So we're good. But okay, so we're done for now with these two ink pads. That's our background. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the bl crumpled blushing brides cardstock. I'm going to tear it diagonally just like this. Now, this isn't like a one and done thing. If you don't like the way it looks, you get a do over. You can get another piece of paper and stamp again or just keep tearing until you get it the way you like. So now I have these torn pieces. They look like things you toss in the trash, but no, they're going to go on our card and I promise they're going to look nice. I promise. Okay. So setting those aside, now we're going to stamp the images that are going to go on our card. And I'm pulling out some very vanilla cardstock. This is not a color that I actually use very often. I don't know why I tend to reach for it, but it, it goes so nice with like a vintage card, you know, now I'm going to take this outline frame right here from tags and bloom. And here's the, here's the thing in the mini catalog, there are two punches that will punch out this image right here. And it will punch out, I believe this one right here, label me lovely and label me something else. I don't have them. So I'm going to use my paper snips to cut these out and that's just fine. And I am going to ink this up with, I think I used soft suede. Let's find out, shall we? I did. That's what it looks like. Okay, so I have that. And then I'm going to take the greeting, happiness looks gorgeous on you. And I'm going to use petal pink ink. And I'm going to stamp that right in the middle of that. Now, if you have either of those punches, whichever one, I forget what it is, punches this out, label me lovely. Um, by all means, go ahead and use it. It'll certainly be a lot quicker, but I don't have it and I don't have intentions of getting it. So I'm just going to cut it out and it's pretty easy to follow the lines. And whenever you're making a card with a lot of distressing on it, like we crumpled the paper, um, a little bit of unevenness isn't going to matter. And this is homemade anyways. So it's okay. It's made with love by an imperfect person. As much as I hate to admit it, the secret's out. I am not perfect, but no one else is either, right? <laughs> I think all of my imperfections are coming out now with my family and I living in such close quarters. Whew. But you know what? We get along really good. So that's one good thing. My family is such a blessing to me, such a blessing. <laughs> Linda, so you have both of these punches. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? This mini catalog was a really good one and a really easy one to overbuy from. Really easy. So now I'm going back to crumb cake and the large flower and I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to stamp it. You know what? Let's use my scrap here. I'm a big believer in using scraps and I already have one flower done and I only need two. So I'm inking this up with crumb cake. And then I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to fill it in with this flower. And it's designed to match this perfectly. But here's the thing. It takes me a little bit. I'm going to use petal pink. It takes me a little bit of scrutiny to figure out how to line this up exactly. So i got to pull this towards me real quick. Let's see. Yep, see, I didn't get it quite lined up. There we go. But they are designed to go with that. So like you can see these solid images right here. You can ink them up and stamp them right inside this one, inside this leaf, inside those little flower buds, and even this right here. So you don't have to color. You can just fill them in with these images. That's what they're made for. Okay, and now I'm going, there is no dye and there is no punch for these little flowers. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these ones out quick and dirty. 
This is not going to be a laborious job. Is that how you say that word? You know, I read a lot, so I come across a lot of interesting words I like to use, but to my great embarrassment, I sometimes don't say them properly. What was this one? Mausoleum? Mausoleum? Mausoleum. Am I saying, see, I can't even remember the right way to do it, but my husband corrected me and I was mortified that I've been saying it wrong all this time. It was so bad. <laughs> how do you say that? Is there a word that you always mess up? Ma mausoleum. Mausoleum. I don't know. Okay. So now we have some linen thread. This has got to be the one stamping supply that I absolutely cannot run out of. I would be lost. This and Stampin' Dimensionals, yeah. So now we're gonna glue our torn pieces down. And so I'm gonna lay them down just to see if they're the way I like them. Now, I want a little bit more of this card base showing, so I'm gonna tear some of this part off some more. Just to show more of the, the card base. And I'm gonna put it like this, let me see. Mm, that's looking better, much better. And now this, I'm, it covers all of that blushing bride. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tear some more of this off. Just like that. And I don't like that piece. There we go. And this is going to get laid right over. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Okay, and this one, I'm going to tear a little bit more of this too. And I'm going to curl that in. Because I want some of that blushing bride to show. Okay, there we go. That looks good. So now we're going to use liquid glue. Um, you can use tear and tape too because I will tell you having crumpled this paper, you've given it lots of texture and lumps and bumps. So it's not going to lie evenly on your card base. So you might need the strength of tear and tape to get it to lie completely flat. That's possible. And I'm going to glue the other half of this Blushing Bride cardstock right down here, just like this. Whoop. So my absolute favorite product from Celebration has been the So Very Vellum designer series paper. And apparently other people thought that too. I'm saying them correctly. All right, Jane, thank you. <laughs> I am. Um, but I really like that So Very Vellum. And I'm wondering, it's considered not orderable. Um, so it's sold out already. All right, let's glue this one down. But I'm wondering if they're going to put it in the annual catalog. Sometimes that happens. I mean, I think the small bloom punch is coming back in the annual catalog. Pretty sure it is. So maybe they'll put, bring the So Very Vellum back. I would be so happy about that. I truly, truly would. Okay, now I'm going to wrap my linen thread around this um, piece of soft suede cardstock. And my original one was kind of at a diagonal. I didn't even do that on purpose. That's just the way it, it fell. So I'm going to do the same thing here too. I'm just going to tie it and let it fall where it does. And then I'm going to glue it down. So if you choose to use liquid glue with this, you might need to use a little bit more than normal. You might need to press and hold a little bit longer than normal just to get it to adhere. So that's good. But yeah, so if you had a favorite celebration product, let me know. Because I got all of them except for the Power of Hope set with the embossing folder. And I didn't get the Lily stamp set or the dies either. But I have the paper. All right, now I'm going to put this on with... Stampin' Dimensionals. I think this might be the other thing I can't do without. Linen thread and Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'll put that right kind of towards the middle, just like that. All right. It's a little bit crooked. There we go. All right. And these little flowers I'm going to put on there with a little dab of liquid glue. Just like this that on and let's get the other one so I stamped a lot Friday and Saturday a lot 
there was a virtual stamp night at Split Coast Stampers, and I love, love, love playing along with it. And so I did. And I ended up with a huge pile of cards. And I like playing along with virtual stamp night too because I tend to use my older stamp sets. And I just, I can't, there's a lot that I can't part with because they're just so adorable. So, and I'm going to show them on my blog so you'll see them. Now we're going to add some pearls to this. I'm going to put some bigger ones in the centers of these flowers right here. And then I'm going to add some teeny tiny ones scattered throughout the card. Just like that. And this is where a paper piercer or a take your pick tool comes in handy because they are really tiny. But fortunately they already have adhesive on the back of them so we don't need to try to fuss with big old glue dots to get these super tiny ones on. Okay, I feel like it needs more. More is more, am I right? More is more. Um, I don't like that one there. I really don't. Let's put it, let's put it up there. Okay. That's the first card. This one was a little bit more diagonal, but I still really like that white shabby background and the crumpled paper and the torn paper. That just, it makes my heart sing. So that's the first card, that's Tags and Bloom, and I'm gonna put the stamps back into the case because I just know they're gonna disappear and get lost. I did a Paper Pumpkin Live a couple weeks ago, and I couldn't find, I remember a stamp set. I was mortified, but I did find it. I did eventually find it. All right, did I get everything back in there? I did. Okay, the stamps found their home. Okay, so let's move on to the second card, which features the new Ornate Garden Suite. Love, love, love this. I wrote in my blog post today that these colors, I was watching Stranger Things this week, I said that, and I was thinking as I was watching it, boy, I really like that dusty, faded, the colors um, of the show, of the early 80s, right? And then this came out and I thought these are the colors from that show Stampin' Up! read my mind. So I have been playing with this like a crazy woman. Let me put my ink pads back here. Clean up my space. Do you guys clean up after every project? Or do you just make a big mess and then clean up at the end? Oh, thanks Linda. Thank you. I'm, I usually clean up after every project before moving on to the next. Even if I'm going to be using the same supplies. I still... I need to clean up. It's just a thing. Terracotta tile. T wait, tile. Terracotta tile. Five and a half by eight and a half. Scored down the middle at four and a quarter. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention that last card I did, because it's a soft suede card base, you would want to put, you'd want to glue a very vanilla um, liner on the inside of the card so that you have something to write on otherwise it would be really difficult for the person to read your writing now this one is really just a matter of rectangles and squares so I've got early espresso and mint macaron here mint macaron there and we have some more early espresso here and this is part of the ornate garden specialty designer series paper it's specialty because some of the sheets have gold foil on them so that's the back of that pattern. This is the back of this pattern. I'll show you the rest of them later. They'll see this one has the gold foil on it. But the colors are mint macaron, old olive, whisper white, terracotta tile, and a new one called bumblebee. I'm thinking it's this deep golden yellow of that flower there. To me, that seems like it would be the color bumblebee, but it's a new in color. So there'll be four more coming, but we won't know them until... May when the demonstrators get to pre-order. So again, I'm going to have the measurements for this. I think this one is four inches by three inches. And these ones, I just can't even remember. I know they're two inches by something, but I'm going to put them in the description I said. So it's going to get laid out like that. And 
we're gonna mat these pieces onto this just like this but I thought this was a great card for showing off your designer series paper because sometimes it's really hard to pick a pattern you just like them all and so you can use this layout and you can make several of these cards and just mix and match all the different patterns of your favorites and you could use them all because if you use the papers um, that are within the same pack you know they're all going to coordinate because that's what Stampin' Up's strength is, is coordinating things for us. Or you can go rogue and do your own thing and mix patterns between packs of paper. I've done that before too. So you do you, it's your stamping project, right? All right, we're gonna glue this. I really like this pattern. Those big white, I think they're daisies. I don't know my flowers. I'm horrible about that but yeah I'm not a gardener although I did think about starting a vegetable garden because I heard my local farm my local farmers market is not showing is not gonna be in Ambridge this year and I'm so sad about that all right now here's a trick you can use your bone folder to kind of lightly rough up the edges of your cardstock it won't tear them oh, I don't know if you can hear my dog Lily the mailman must be here But my family's up there, so they can take care of it. My little dog barks at everybody. So see, you can just use your bone floor if you want to give it a little light distress. And I'm going to do that to all the pieces. So yeah, my local farmer's market decided to close. However, they run from May to November. I can't imagine they would be closed the whole season, but I know they need to start planning things now, which is why they probably had to make a decision. But I really hope that they come back for the peak of summer, because I think there's still time to plant that kind of stuff because we have a really great grocery store, but I love my farmer's market. I've been going there for 20 years since my oldest was a newborn and they know us there. It's the same vendors and just really, really wonderful people. In fact, the one guy lets me bring my own bags and I just wander around his booth and put all everything I want in my own bags and he totally trusts me. And then he just counts it all up at the end. So I like having relationships like that. And then I'm going to put this one down. Now, if you want to, you can move this down a little bit, but I'm going to leave it be because I already glued it down. If you just want it more evenly spaced, your block's more evenly spaced. Now, I'm not going to lie. Some of these measurements for these two down here, they involve eighths of an inch, which I know some people don't like. But if you want to just wing it, you can just cut these designer series pieces of paper um, and then just glue them onto your early espresso cardstock and then just trim around it to your own liking. You don't even have to mess with measurements, which honestly, that's what I would normally do, but I know people like to know exactly how big something is, how much they should cut it. So, oh, my dog is visiting. She's visiting, now she's walking away. There's too much stuff for her to jump up on. Okay, so this is the ornate garden ribbon combo pack and you get terracotta tile ribbon and old olive ribbon and you get five yards of each and we're going to use the terracotta tile ribbon on our project today so let me have that aside at the ready and I'm going to need my very well used stamping sponge now they come bigger than this in a package of three but I cut mine into eight pieces with a pair of scissors and I like to put a binder clip on the end of some of them so that when I'm holding them I don't get as much ink on my fingertips and so it kind of kind of keeps your fingers a little bit neater now we're gonna take this piece of mint macaron cardstock now if you notice I'm actually gonna tear the bottom part of that and the bottom part of the early espresso mat so when I stamp it's gonna be more towards the top of my mint macaron cardstock and the corner this corner we're gonna use this right here the swirly one, I'm gonna put it in the top two corners. And I am going to use soft suede ink to do that. So give that a tap, and I'm gonna line it up there and stamp it. There we go. And then I am going to take Thank You, which is from Ornate Thanks. This is all a bunch of thank yous and just different ways to say it. 
So this would be the only thank you set you ever needed. It truly would. And I'm gonna use terracotta tile ink and I'm gonna grab my blender pen because there's something I haven't done in a while that I've been really into. Now, I'm gonna show you something. This thank you, what I actually wanna do is stamp thank up here and I wanna stamp you underneath it. So if this pains you, close your eyes because I'm going to cut my stamp. <laughs> Did that hurt anybody? This just gives me more versatility. And here's the thing, if I wanna stamp it all on one line, it fits right back together on the block, just like that. Or I can use it separate. So that's what I'm doing. Now, you could fuss with a post-it note and try to mask things off so you only ink one portion at a time. But I tried that, and it was just way too complicated. So I cut it. And now I'm going to ink it up with terracotta tile. And I'm going to stamp it right about there. And then I'm going to take the U from Thank You, and I'm going to ink that up with terracotta tile, and I'm going to stamp it right underneath, just like that. And now I'm going to take my blender pen, and I'm just going to lightly go over this. I just want to give it a little bit of a blurred, old, vintage look. So I'm going to smear it a little bit. It's just, it's very subtle, but I like it. And now I'm taking ever so much and I'm going to ink that up in terracotta towel and I'm going to put it right underneath the thank you. Now I'm not going to lie, this is photopolymer. I found it a little bit hard to read the small cursive part of this. Now it is printed on the plastic sheet, so I can see it that way, but when the stamps are on there, it's kind of hard for me. So you might have to bring out your reading glasses for that one. I don't have reading glasses yet, so, but I found it a little bit hard to read, but once you stamp it, you can see it and you can see it on the liner just fine. Now I'm going, oh, I'm going to tear this actually. I'm going to tear this and then I'm going to tear my early espresso mat. And I want to make sure that they're matted properly before I start doing it. Okay, that's perfect. So now I'm going to sponge this mint macaron cardstock piece right there. And I just used terracotta tile. I meant to use soft suede. That's fine. We're just going to go over it. There we go. Oh my gosh, I just love all the ways you can use ink. And I'm going to glue that on there. And I'm just using regular liquid glue for this. We'll use dimensionals on the entire panel, but for now, just liquid glue. Okay, and then I'm going to take some very vanilla scalloped lace trim. And this is in the annual catalog, and it's featured as part of the Bird Ballad Suite. But I just really like the little decorative vintagey touch that it gave to this card. And I'm going to use glue dots. And I'm going to place them strategically on my lace, like in the darker parts there. You won't even notice them. And I'm going to put it right along the bottom. And I'll put another one right on that section, right there. Let's see. I may have made this a little bit difficult for myself. There we go. Oh. Okay, and now we're gonna trim it. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. Oop, got a glue dot stuck to that. Put that on there that away. Okay, now we're going to wrap around that terracotta tile ribbon from the um, Ornate Garden combo pack. And here's a trick. Because it's kind of hard to wrap this around it and tie it, and this is sliding all over the place. So let's do this. Let's put our Stampin' Dimensionals on there. Okay. 
Linda, I don't think I use as many as you. <laughs> You're the queen of that. Oh, yeah. I know, Jane, you like antiques, don't you? You're always telling me about the pieces that you have in your home that are from family members. So I could see you liking vintage stuff. So here's what I'm going to do to make it easy to tie. I'm going to lay my ribbon down across my card. And then I'm going to take the liner off of the dimensionals on the back of this piece here. And then I'm going to adhere this to my card base. Being careful not to, I don't have any dimensionals in the middle of that. So as long as I put this over the ribbon where the ribbon's in the middle, the ribbon's not going to get stuck. So I'm going to lay it over it just like this. And now my ribbon's free to move, but it's also... Um, the weight of this paper is going to keep it from sliding around all over the place. And it's going to make it so much easier to tie it. Because I already kind of struggle a little bit tying bows. I like fuss with them and play with them until I get them just right. So anything that makes it easier, I am down with. Tips and tricks, helping our Stampin' Sisters out, right? Sharing what we love. Okay, so I've got that ribbon on there, and I think, oh, this card is done. That was the last little bit needed. Now, this one I don't think you would need to put a liner inside, so I think you'd be okay there, but that is pretty. Oh, my gosh. Well, here's the thing. So, I really like this ornate garden suite. Um collection so and I've been going crazy crazy creating with it so here's actually what I'm going to do for the month of April April 1st through April 30th I have at least 12 projects using the ornate garden suite lined up so I'm gonna feature them on my blog throughout the month of April and I also have tutorials PDF tutorials written up for each of the projects that I'm featuring in this collection Anyone that places an order in the month of April of $50 or more in my store will get all the tutorials for all the projects that I'm making in April with this Ornate Garden Suite collection. And I'm going to send out the tutorials as I post the projects on my blog. So you're not going to get all of them in one big email file. So you have something like a surprise in your email inbox throughout the month of April. And no matter when you order in April, you will get all the tutorials. You'll get all of them. So if you order, let's say on April 18th, you, I will email you all the tutorials that have been released up through April 18th. And then after April 18th, you'll get them one by one, the remainder as they post on my blog. So it's like, instead of getting a surprise in your snail mail box, you're getting it in your email box inbox throughout the whole month of April. And they're not just cards. I'm going to do 3D projects, fancy folds, techniques, simple cards, more complicated cards. So it's going to be a, a variety of everything. And they're all going to feature this collection here, which I'm going to show you the projects or the products now. So $50 order before shipping and tax in my online store. I will have the reward code out tomorrow on my blog since tomorrow is April 1st. And I hope you enjoy it because I was super excited while I was making the projects. So let's take a look at what is in this suite. So this is the flyer that Stampin' Up! put out for it. It's three pages and I have all of these projects. I have all of these products here. So these are gilded gems and I've used some of the stuff, but it's a sheet of gold gilded gems. And they're not overly bright. They just, they have like a little, um, they're like a flatter gold, which I really like. They're not quite so shiny. And it fits that vintage vibe of this set. So you get 90 of those ones, 90 for of all of these. And the thing with this collection is you can buy these each individually. Or you can buy the dies and stamps in a bundle for a 10% discount. Or there's one number here that you can order everything on all three of these pages, which is what I did. Save yourself some typing. Just type that one number in and you'll get it all. And then you'll be able to make all the projects in my tutorial bundle. Then we have this ornate floral 3D embossing folder. And it embosses really, really deeply. I have a sample here. 
I swiped this with my Whisper White ink pad, but it gives a really deep embossing, and you can get an even deeper impression if you use a Stampin' Spritzer um, with some water in it and just lightly spray your cardstock before you put it in the folder and run it through your favorite die cutting machine. But this is a thick, this is a thick folder, so depending on which die cutting machine you have, you might have to play with the sandwich a little bit. I have a cuddle bug. So I know for mine, I use the A plate. I set my embossing folder on top with the cardstock in it. And then I um, use a B plate. And then I actually take one of my thinner embossing folders and open it up like this and set it on top and I roll it through that way. But every machine's different, so you'll just, you'll have to experiment. But this embossing folder is beautiful. It makes me think of like old timey wallpaper and I know wallpaper's coming back in style, actually. It's coming back in style. Now we have the ornate style stamp set, which I just used the little corner image on this. And there's this large bouquet stamp, which is so pretty. It's so fun to color. And I already have a technique lined up to do with that one. And the frames that are part, or the dies that are part of that bundle, Oh, these are beautiful. The ornate layers frames. And I have some pieces die cut here so you can see them. But look at those frames. And they're meant to layer on top of each other. So you could take this piece and stack it there. There's this one. You could stack it there. We have that, this piece. There's a stitched extra long skinny rectangle that can fit on there. And then you have these two pieces right here, which die cut an intricate pattern. So I'm thinking with this, you could repeatedly die cut maybe the bat, your card base, and have some really pretty designer series paper peeking through. I think that would look pretty. So these frames, these dies, in this ornate style stamp set, you can buy them individually or you can bundle them together for a 10% discount. But this is a great coloring set if you like to use Stampin' Blends, if you like to use our Stampin' Write Markers, if you like to do sponging or use sponge daubers, lots you can do with that. Then next up we have the Ornate Thanks set, which is what my thank you that I scandalously cut in half came from and you can see the part of it's in cursive and the frames there's a, I keep calling that the dies that go with this particular set are called the ornate borders and it's just what it is it's a bunch of different borders there's some flowers here that are die cuts there's this rose border right there then we have this really pretty strip, and we have this one. Now this piece right here, there's a skinny metal bar that lays over top of that, and it will give you um, this piece right here. So this is the same piece, just with an extra metal piece put at the bottom to cut this out as a single, single shape. And then we have this right here, and we have this one and then we have this one here so lots of different ways to decorate the edge of your cards or make a stained glass look if you have the patience to fill in those empty spaces there so that's ornate borders die and they are bundled with the ornate thanks stamp set also at a 10% discount or you can buy them separately if you want now for the paper, which is usually everybody's favorite part. Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series Paper. Now on every pack of um, Designer Series Paper, it will say what the colors are in that pack of paper. So in this case, I've already said Bumblebee, it's a new in color. Early Espresso, Mint Macaron, Old Olive, Terracotta Tile, and Whisper White. So we used this one on our card today. You can see that right there, it's that top piece. This is the back. And then we used this also in this 
bottom left square there. And this is the back and it has the gold foil. That's the specialty part of this paper. And then we have this pattern, which I used in the bottom right of my card. And that's the back. I like this one. And then this reminds me of the flowering foils celebration pack that we have right now. And so you can color this one and this is gold foil. And I have a couple ideas for this one too. That's the back. I'm not real crazy about this pattern, but this is the only pattern I don't care for in this whole package. I absolutely love all the others. And that's what's great. But if you don't like the pattern on one side, you'll probably like it on the other. So we have this one, which you can see I've already used. And this is gorgeous. That mint macaron with that gold foil. I love, love, love that. We've already seen that. You get two sheets of each of the patterns. I think we went through all of them. Oh, no. This one. So this is another foil, gold foil pattern that you can color in. This I love. Does this not make you want it to be summer or what? I just, I love all those yellows. And I'm really convinced that that is Bumblebee, which makes me super excited to see the other four in colors. So not much longer to wait for that now. Okay, so that's the Ornate Garden Sweet Collection. It's gonna be available tomorrow. And I will have the host code up so that you can watch for all the projects I have planned for the month of April. And if you want the tutorials for all of them, which is mega, mega, at least 12 of them, you can just order a $50 order in my store and I will be emailing them to you throughout the month of April. Um, what else? I think that's probably it for today. Yes, this went on way longer than a half hour, but... I'll pull the cards out again. So thanks for joining me. Um, share the video. Subscribe to my newsletter. Um, I have a sign-up form either on my blog or on my Facebook page. And that way you'll be sure to every Tuesday you will get the Stampin' News newsletter in your email inbox. And you'll always know what's going on. Because I'm really prompt, really good about keeping you up to date with what's going on. And be sure to go to my blog tomorrow, thejoyfulstamper.com, to see project number one. That's in my Ornate Garden Sweet Mega Tutorial Bundle. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. And I will catch you later. Happy stamping.